Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Windsor Baptist. How are you doing with the quiz? Everyone got 100, I'm sure. Uh, welcome this morning. Uh, our pastor, Rob, he's on vacation still. Uh, this is his last week, but he won't be here next Sunday. Uh, we're very fortunate that Reverend Clyde Lowe is our guest speaker this Sunday, and he will be speaking again next Sunday. Uh, just a welcome to everyone who may be visiting this morning. On the back of the seats in front of you, there's a uh, little pink slip. And if you wish to, you may fill it out. Or some are yellow. Sorry, thanks, Claire. Some are yellow. Just fill them out if you have certain concerns or whatever. Uh, they'll go to Pastor Rob, and he will contact you if you so desire. But we're glad that you're here. Secondly... This is the little elements for communion. Today is Communion Sunday, and if you haven't already picked them up, they're around the corner out in the hallway. Oh, before I forget, these little things go in the box outside in the hallway. So uh, I think those are the two things I had to mention this morning. So for opening the service this morning, I chose a little passage from First Chronicles. And it's uh, David's psalm of thanks. So I'll read four verses. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come here today from all kinds of different backgrounds, all kinds of family issues, uh, personal issues, and Lord, we seek your face. We seek your presence here among us. We just commit the whole service to you now, the music, the prayers, the sermon, and Lord, we just pray that you would have your way with us. May we bring honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Everyone like to stand? We're going to start out with, uh, well, as soon as I get in order, uh, great and mighty is he. And if you like to clap, clap. If you want to stamp your feet, stamp your feet. If you want to do a little jig, do a little jig. Mm. However the spirit hits you. Great and mighty is he, yes, great and mighty is he, clothed in glory, the radiant splendor, great and mighty is he, yes, great and mighty is he, great and mighty is he, he's clothed in glory, a radiant splendor, great and mighty is he. Let us lift his name up high and celebrate his grace. For he has redeemed our lives in grace. Ah, oh, yes, great and mighty is he. Yes, great and mighty is he. Clothed in glory, the reign in splendor. Great and mighty is he. So let us lift his name up high and celebrate his grace. For he has redeemed our lives, he reigns. in glory, a radiant splendor, great and mighty is he, cause great and mighty is, great and mighty is, and great and mighty is he. Yes, he is, praise his name. Billow 
Because you are tempted tossed When you are discouraged Thinking all is lost Count your many blessings Name them one by one And it will surprise you What the Lord has done Oh, count your blessings Name them one by one Yes, count your blessings See what God has done Count your blessings Name them one by one Count your many blessings See what God has done Are you ever burdened with the load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings Every doubt will fly And you will be singing as the Yes, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. So when you look at others with their land, and go. Think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. So count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven nor your home on high. Oh yes, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Well, so amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Oh, count your blessings, name them one by one. Yes, count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Yes, count your many blessings, see what God has done. Yes, count your many blessings, see what God has done. Yes, count your blessings, praise His name. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. 
Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see everybody. Good to be in the house of the Lord. And he is worthy of all our praise. So we will. Will you join me in prayer? Mighty God, we do thank you for this day, for all your abundance of blessings. We thank you for who you are, the mighty God, supreme in authority, timeless in existence, awesome in holiness, Supreme, supreme in authority. And Father, we just ask your blessings upon each and every one in this place. Because Father, you have no favorites. And you like common people. So Father, we are common people. But you can do mighty things through us. Father, we ask you to bless the children. Allow their ears to be opened. To hear your word while they're young and to be able to obey your word and live for you, to have the best life ever, ever, because your plans for us are plans for good and not for harm, plans to give us a hope in the future. And so, Father, we ask you to be in total control of this day. Help us to be a blessing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We surprise that one on you. <laughs> Christina. Good morning. God always provides, See even you. when he surprises us. Oh, I think right side up will be easier. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, I can't see you this morning. So, um, Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Psalms, uh, verse, uh, chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valleys, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God for the people of God. May his name alone be praised. Amen. 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 We're going to slow it down a bit here. A little more worshipful. This song's called All in All. If you know it, sing loud. Because we already know what we sound like. We want to hear what you sound like. So. You. 
Yes, he does. Praise his name. Pastor Clyde. Lori's coming up. Am I hooked up? Oh, yes. Well, good morning, everyone. So good to see you on this lovely, cool morning. <laughs> cool in here. Before I go any further, uh, I have two special people here. To me, it's Joe and Rose. Now, Rose used to be uh, the head of finances at the Ellsford Baptist Church. And lo and behold, they moved here. So stand, just let the people see you. Stand up. And Brother here is going to pray for me, for God's anointing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Clyde. We thank you that you have chosen him to preach your word. And Lord, as he speaks to us today with the message you've laid on his heart, we pray that it would go forth with power. Undergird him and give him strength. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. There's always a ritual, isn't there? The pastor gets up here. What I hope to accomplish with this message, and this is part one, next week will be part two. I hope to bring you closer to God. To enjoy your salvation. To have the power of God in your life. To be a threat to hell itself. To make the devil mad. Oh, he's been after me this week. The title of the message is The Desire of Mankind. We were created for one purpose and one purpose only. To have a relationship a close, loving, intimate relationship with our Creator, God. The scriptures I'm going to read are from Ephesians 3, 14 to 19, and Ephesians 5, 18 to 21. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Now this is talking about the Christian family. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might. By his spirit. In the inner man and woman. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height of God's love, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. And that word all is so important. All the fullness of God. And now Ephesians 5, 18 to 21. And be not drunk with wine. And everybody's silent. <laughs> Where is an excess but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs? Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Give me thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting ourselves one to another in the fear of God. 
Now, how many of you here today will sit down to your favorite meal and just eat barely enough to survive and get up and walk away? Anybody here? Let's see your hand. Not a soul. I'm with you. But you know, this is how many Christians are. They want just enough of God to get them to heaven when they die. But that's all. Why is that? We're all, including me, at times, are guilty of this. Because we're not fully convinced, sometimes we are, that God is the happy, the full, the right, the best way. Some unchristians, you've heard this, have been heard to say, I want to live a little first and then I'll become a Christian after that. Now, why would they say that? The biggest problem with getting people to Christ is to get them to understand, first of all, that God is good. That his way is the best way, the exciting way, the forever way. Hmm. That mentality is still in some Christians to a much lesser degree, but is still there just the same. The mind of humankind is so corrupt it is hard for us to fully grasp the truth that the closer to God we are, the happier we're going to be. And Satan works very hard keeping that truth from us. But that's one truth that will set everyone free. Now, let's take a look at man's relationship with God, starting with the first man and woman. In Genesis 3, 8 to 9, we read, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. That's important, that part, walking in the garden. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. The Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? Where are you? God is missing that relationship that he had. They have sinned and have broken the cord. Sometimes we might feel like hiding from the presence of God because we've sinned. And let me tell you, friends, nobody... Nobody is sinless. Now, I may have said this here before. If I have, please forgive me. This is a true story. This one fellow was visiting a, a family that went to a church that believed you could be sinless. And everybody said, Amen? No. <laughs> anyway, he was expounding on this particular day that from that day forward he had not sinned once. However, his wife was standing behind him <laughs> and she was going, uh-uh, oh, uh-uh. Oh, oh. Listen, none of us are sinless. Just remember this, that your sins have been forgiven we will never be perfect in this life. But the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us. It's like something that flows. It's not a stagnant pond. It's water that flows and continually cleanses. See, if we get broken down by our sins and our sinful heart, we can't enjoy God. We focus so much on our faults and failings that we lose the joy that we should have or did have in Christ. Sit to get alone sometime 
I've done this, this has happened to me many times when I lay down at night or someplace. And I realize just how good God has been to the likes of me. And I've said to him, Lord, I don't have the words. I don't know how to tell you how grateful I am. And what really pleases me is that even if I do fail, and we all do, it does not break the relationship. But with Adam and and Eve, his wife, they had one simple rule. Don't eat of that tree. But they did. And the reason they did Because Satan used the same lie on Eve that he had within him. He said, God's lying to you. If you just eat of it, maybe even a nibble, you're going to have the knowledge of good and evil, and you shall be as God. You shall be as God's. What a lie. And that's what Satan says to us when it comes to sin and temptation. Oh, you've got to give in. It's going to be great. How many of you, most of us here, have gone fishing? We use a hook. And there's a barb on that hook. And it's there for a reason. It's to keep that fish on the hook. And if we continually sin in one particular area, let the devil fool us, we'll get hooked. But even if we do, let me tell you, friends, you can be set free through Christ. Now notice that God walked in that garden in the past with them. A very intimate relationship. But now, now they're hiding. I wonder what they must have felt like when they had that close, loving, intimate relationship with God, their creator. And now it is broken. No wonder they're hiding. They don't want God to find them. But he knew where they were. He knew where they were. Did he cast them into hell? No. But they had to leave the garden. But he made a way back in Christ, as we all know. Notice he walked. God walked with them. And I have found that when Elizabeth and I are walking together, that's when you really converse It's easier to talk for some reason when you're walking together. It's intimate. It's relaxing. It's that intimacy that they had lost with God. We find that it isn't until Genesis chapter 4 verses 25 to 26, that man began to really seek the Lord again. Abel was the exception. They weren't seeking the Lord, but then a little later, they began again. And I have to say this, this is a little sidebar. I watch a lot of things that are on the news that is going on in the world, I never, I know I'm sounding like an old man, but I never in all my greatest imagination would have thought that things are the way they are today. Good is bad, and bad is evil, or bad is good. Isn't that an upside-down way of thinking? There's only one religion in the world today 
that is not tolerated. You know what it is. It's Christianity. There's something about Christ that causes things to happen. If you want to know the power in his name, just walk down at Walmart or somewhere where there's a lot of people and say, Hallelujah! Praise the name of Jesus! If anybody's near you, boom! You're going to have a lot of room. If somebody's in your way, try, try that. Now the psalmist in 122.1 He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He knew. Then after Genesis chapter 4, we come across a very unusual man. A man that was raptured. How many of you know what that word is? Oops, yep, a few. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of you do. I know you do. Do you know who it was? Yes, Enoch. Enoch. Let's read about Enoch. There's a key word that keeps cropping up. Genesis 5, 23 to 24. Now I'm going to go back to verse 22. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. It must have been a very intimate relationship. There was only one thing, obviously, in Enoch's life that really mattered. That was God. And he loved God so much. He had pleased God so much. God says, I'm not going to, you don't have to die. I'm going to take you out of here right now. How many of you would like that? Yeah, I wouldn't mind that either. I wouldn't mind that either. God took him without death. Now, does it sound like Enoch's life was boring? Mundane? Uninteresting? No fun? Anything but. He was experiencing life on a higher plane. I think it was, yes, it was D.L. Moody had a great experience with God one time. God had moved him to go into this apartment alone. And while he was there, God poured his spirit out on him. As most of you that know him, he was a tremendous, powerful evangelist back in the 1800s. In his own words, he said, I had to ask God to stay his hand, the joy was more than I could handle. I thought it would kill me. In our present condition, we couldn't handle that fullness that we will have in heaven. But hallelujah, one day we will. And that day will come. We'll, there's nothing in this life that could compare. There is no pleasure, no amusement, Nothing that can compare with what God has waiting for us. I see both these people winning millions and millions of dollars. That's the last thing I'd want to happen to me, especially when I was younger. Not too many people can handle that. But at my age, what would I do with it? I'd Certainly, I'd, I'd give it away. But I I couldn't ride my Harley anymore. (laughs) I couldn't go scuba diving anymore. I got all I need. 
I got all I want. But the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. In Genesis 1.26, we read that mankind is made in the image of God. And that brings us to the desire of humankind. The desire of humankind. Because of that, we can never feel complete when we are out of sync with our Creator. There is a desire in every human being. People don't understand what it is. They try to satisfy it in many ways. It's expressed in the pursuit of happiness. Because we have sinned and are out of sync with God, we look to fulfill that desire in the wrong places. We're not as smart as we think we are, are we? When we don't realize. But, what a wonderful change came to us when we gave our life to Jesus. You begin to see and understand things you didn't understand before. When God was working on me, I thought to myself, well, which religion is right? Who am I to believe? Well, I took the Bible on my own. I started to read in the Gospel of John. Did it make me happy? No. I got so angry, I threw it against the wall. I said, I'll never read that book again. But the Holy Spirit wouldn't let me go. Kept calling me back. I read right through it, didn't understand it. So then I said, God, I want to understand this. Please help me. When you get serious... When you get serious about God and His Son, things will happen in your life. We have to be serious. We long for fulfillment. But because we are sinners, we don't understand that it can only be experienced with a restored relationship with our Creator, God. That's what we have lost that relationship that Adam and Eve had with God. But because of what Jesus did on that cross and rising from the dead, we can have it again. We can have it again. And one day, we will have it all. We'll be completely without sin. Joy, if our Christian loved ones that have passed on were to We had a chance to talk to them and say, well, what's it like? They wouldn't be able to. There's no language that could express the joy. It has to be experienced. Power. Pleasure. Riches. And fame. These are the big four that comprise the search of mankind. For fulfillment. They're transitory. They only last for a while. And a lot of people seek that power. Lots of times it's politicians. And you know who else it could be? Pastors. Shocking, isn't it? Some pastors can't resist that power. We're supposed to be shepherds of the flock, not dictators. Power is something that almost everybody wants. But then there's pleasure. Oh, pleasure. It has such a draw, such a power. It's so hard to resist. And the devil keeps saying, go for it, go for it. 
That's how he gets a lot of people. And then there's riches. As I said, if I had millions and millions of dollars, what would I do with it? I'm glad, I thank God, that I wasn't rich when I was young. I didn't have a lick of sense. <laughs> Can anybody relate to that here today? Uh-huh. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that now, do we? Mm-hmm. And then there's fame. Oh, you know the movie stars and the singers, when they can't do it anymore, they have an awful hard time. Because that kept them going. It was addictive. It was like a drug. So if we get caught up in any of those things, they're not going to give you what you really need and what you really want. This is the big mistake of most of us. The search of mankind for fulfillment is not found here. The psalmist said in Psalm 42, 1 to 2, and I will stop here this week. You have to come back. I hope I'll see you again. Psalm 42, 1 to 2. He knew where this desire could be met. Psalm 42, 1 and 2. As the heart, the deer, panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? I pray this morning that God puts that hunger and thirst in each one of us and we will not stop till we get the fullness of God and the power of God in our lives. Yes, it's the best thing that could ever happen to us. So next week I'm going to continue on with this, this thought a bit. But then... I'm going to talk about how to be satisfied. I'm going to tell you some things you can do to get there, to have that fullness. God wants us to have the best there is. He wants us to have all the joy of heaven, and he will give it to us if we open our hearts up to him. Just one thing. One of the things I've learned to do, you can't always sit down and say, okay, Lord, and spend a lot of time. Here's what I have learned. You got to get alone. And you sit there, and I say, Lord, I'm in your presence. I put myself in your presence. I'm going to wait here and sit here till I hear from you, till I sense you. And I've had some of the most wonderful times when I did that. Take time for Jesus, for he took time for you. Amen. I'm just going to pray a prayer for a moment. Heavenly Father, enable us at this time to open our hearts as far as they will go to receive all that you have for us. Oh God, we crave you. We must have you in our lives. There is no life, no satisfaction outside of you. You are our God, we are your people. Fill us, anoint us for your glory and for your use. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now we're going to, going to have the Lord's Supper.
I do it a little different than our pastor does. Where's the music people? Uh Uh-oh. Are you coming up? Oh, there you are. Sorry. Okay. That's a good. It's a lovely song. Now, I'm, I do communion a little different than our pastor does, so I hope you're okay with that. You who truly and earnestly Repent of your sins. That means willing to turn from them. Who have love and concern for your neighbors. Who intend to lead a new life, following the commandment of God by walking in holy ways. Draw near with reverence, faith, and thanksgiving. And take the supper of the Lord to your comfort. Come to the sacred table, not because you must, but because you may. Come to testify that you are righteous, or excuse me, that you are not righteous, but that you sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to be his true disciples. Come, not because you're strong, but because you're weak. Because in your frailty and sin you stand in constant need of heaven's mercy and help. And now that the supper of the Lord is spread before you, lift your heart, minds and hearts above all selfish cares and fear. Let this bread and wine be to you the witness and signs of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Before the throne of the Heavenly Father and the cross of the Redeemer, make your humble confession of sin, dedicate your lives to Christian obedience and service, and pray for strength to know and do the blessed and holy will of God. Before we go any further, I must warn you, you have to, if you have asked the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sin and to save your soul, and you are serious, you can come. Now, maybe you're living in willful sin. That's the sin that says, yeah, I know, but I'm not going to give it up. And I've heard somebody tell me that one time. What we're going to do, we're going to have a moment of silent prayer. And I want you to confess to God silently any known sin in your life. Ask him to forgive you and to give you the strength and the desire to forsake it. Let us be silent before the Lord as we pray. We have confessed our sin to you, O God, and we know that because of Jesus, it is forgiven. Strengthen us and enable us to forsake it. For we love you, Lord, because you first loved us. And we remember, we remember when Jesus went to that cross. He had a body like ours. He suffered and died for us. Thank you in Jesus' name. We are come together today in obedience of our Lord's command to partake of the Lord's Supper. To its blessing and fellowship, all disciples of the Lord Jesus who have confessed him before men and have desired to serve him may come you see, this is not our table, but it is the table of our Lord. Now, the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Here's one thing I want us to all understand. He had a body like ours. He felt pain. He felt depression at times. He felt fear. He had to experience everything that we can experience in life. He experienced temptation. There's nothing that we have experienced that he didn't experience, but he never gave in to it. That's why he can be our high priest interceding to the Father on our behalf. And when he went to that cross, that body was experienced in pain that I, we will never understand. But you know what was worse? When he was on that cross, this is the only hell he experienced. Jesus did not go to a fiery hell. He descended into Hades, paradise. And that's another sermon. So, while he's on that cross, he's experiencing hell for a brief moment. You see, hell is separation from God. That's why when he looked to heaven and he cried out to the Father, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You see, he had to be forsaken so we would not. He experienced hell for us. And praise his blessed name. 
We are saved through what he has done. Let us eat of this bread in remembrance of Christ's body given for you, and let us be thankful. In the same way also we took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant or the new agreement in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. When the Bible uses the term, the shedding of blood, he shed blood, referring to somebody that shed blood, that means they killed somebody. The shedding of blood means death. When he was on that cross, he shed his blood, the life force. That's what came out of him. But you know, it started in the garden. It started in the garden of Gethsemane. When he sweated, as it were, great drops of blood. The anguish is called hemotidrosis. When one is stressed to the extent that the blood comes out through the capillaries, an agony that only he would understand. He gave his life. He wanted to hold on to his life. He'd have the same reasons that we would have. Do you want to go to heaven? Well, yes, but not tonight. He knew all that. And he knew what awaited him on that cross. So he shed his blood for us. Jesus said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you. And let us be thankful. Let us bow for a prayer of thanksgiving. God, we came here this morning because we're your people. We acknowledge our faults and our failings, but this communion service reminds us that you have taken care of it, that you have taken care of us and you're continuing to take care of us. We praise you, God. For such a love. In Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Amen. After you sing the closing hymn, I'll be up here to have a benediction. Everyone like to stand. We're going to finish off with how marvelous and how wonderful. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene, and I wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned, unclean. Yes, how. sins and my sorrows he made them his very own he bore the burden to Calvary and 
and suffered and died alone. Yes, how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song it shall Choice. Isn't that just so wonderful? And so into God's gracious keeping we would commit each other. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon us and give us peace. In our going out and in our coming in, in our lying down and in our rising up, in our labor and in our leisure, in our laughter, and in our tears. Until we come to stand before him in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawn, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Love.